Hi everyone, this is Dan Keynes, and I'm back with another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. This time we're going to be talking about Resolve 9.1.1 Lite, and we're going to be working with Blackmagic Cinema Camera RAW files, uh, setting their color space correctly to BMD film mode, and transcoding to Apple ProRes 422. So I'm just going to log into Resolve here. and I'm going to open the default project. Resolve 9.1 is so much easier to use than the last time I did a tutorial uh, back on version 8. This time you don't have to connect your your volumes they automatically show up in the root here so uh, I'm going to go to my desktop where I've got a folder filled with DNG files which are the raw Blackmagic Cinema Camera format. And I've got them in a folder called Eddie DNG2. I'm going to go ahead and go in there, and we can select all of the clips or files that we have in that folder by holding down Shift and selecting all, dragging them down to the media pool. And all the images or clips should show up in the media pool here. And we can go ahead and go to conform. and you can use conform to do things with your timeline and you can also use it to uh, export ALE or uh, CDL you know AAF files for AVID if you go to your timeline up here in the upper left hold down control and click uh, you can kick out different XML or ALE files if you're using AVID which we're not today but just to give you that note and uh, we're going to go ahead and go into the color bay now. And this is usually what you first see uh, when you enter the color bay. And you've got your lift gamma and gain controls. But there's a setting that uh, doesn't come checked by default. And when I first started working with the raw files, I had a bit of a confusion because, you know, I shot film mode and all the raw files that I'd bring in looked like they were already somewhat colored. And I wanted it to be flatter. So we're going to go over here to the camera tool, which is the camera raw adjustment. And instead of using decode using project settings, we're going to go ahead and, and change it to clip settings. And you can see that uh, you have a lot more options once you do that. And the first thing we're going to adjust is going from the Rec 709 color space to the BMD film color space. And you'll notice that that makes it look exactly like it was when you were shooting uh, film mode on the cinema camera. So another cool thing about this is that uh, it opens up your option to do raw white balance and exposure adjustments, which are some of the most important tools that you have at your disposal when using raw. Uh, because there's no direct color temperature adjustment where you can dial in a number when you're shooting with the cinema camera, uh, you now have that ability over here with the clip decoder settings. We can change the way that the white balance was adjusted. So, you know, it was a bit cooler in this shot, so I can go up to like 7,000. And you'll notice that there's a tint adjustment which is not available at all in camera. And uh, I've noticed that it seems to be a default value assigned to the camera, uh, probably from the factory. But you might find that that varies greatly depending on what lenses you're using, uh, what kind of scene you're shooting, and what kind of filters like, you know, ND filters or NDIR filters. Uh, that greatly affects your tint. So we'll go ahead and take the tint out of this particular shot. We're just going to do a very quick one light pass. And you can actually use the keyboard to enter numbers. So we'll just zero out the tint. We'll set our color temperature to 7000. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to bump the exposure half a, half a notch here. And you'll see that that just made an adjustment to the clip. Now, a really cool option that you have when you're in this uh, color adjustment window and you're using the camera raw setting is that you can highlight all of your clips by using the shift key again 
and selecting clips. And we'll go ahead and select all the clips in the timeline. And uh, release the shift key. And we'll go down and you'll see two little adjustments here. There's apply settings to all selected clips or apply changes to all selected clips. So anything that I've changed will be adjusted with this one. And anything that's uh, relevant to all the settings will be applied using this one. So I'm going to go ahead and apply all settings. And after that's done, we can unhighlight. And you'll notice that all of these clips now are under the same white balance. And they're also under the same uh, decoder setting using the BMD film color space. So that's really cool. And then another little trick, we can see this shot might be a little overexposed. We can take the exposure down. And there's also a highlight recovery button that we can use. And you can see what that does to his, to Eddie's fur there in the window. So that just brings his fur into a legal space. Looks really nice. And uh, you might remember this one with the black sunspot. We can turn highlight recovery on. That won't quite fix the situation with the sunspot, but uh, there are tricks that we can use to fix that. Not going to get into that here today. Just wanted to give you guys a basic overview about how to get the film color space back uh, using the camera raw decoder in DaVinci. So, you know, this might not exactly be a work of art, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, get ready to export these. So what I'm going to do is go over to the delivery window and we have our timeline over here. We can start by selecting the first clip in the timeline that we want to export, holding down control and clicking and marking that as our endpoint for the export. Going to the last clip, selecting that and control clicking again, marking out. That's our out point. So all the clips in the interim will get rendered when we start the render process. And uh, you can see over here that you can create presets for your exports. So for instance, we'll just start with a fresh one. Uh, we're going to go QuickTime, change the codec to ProRes 422HQ, and we're going to set our frame rate to 2398. Make sure our resolution is set where we want it. I want to make 1920 by 1080 files. That's great. Uh, video or data level. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set that to normally scaled legal video because we'll consider this a deliverable. And another thing we're going to want to do is turn on render audio. I don't actually have any audio clips in there, but what this will allow you to do is pass through audio, which was another thing missing in DaVinci 8 that we were so lucky, lucky to get in DaVinci 9. So those look great. Render timelines. This is an important one here. Render timeline as individual source clips. Now, if you're not uh, doing a final color correction of a film or commercial, for instance, you're just going to want to do a one light pass. So what we're doing is making a one light pass on all the files that are in the bin. I'm going to turn that back to individual source clips because we want to maintain individual separate clips. We're just passing this footage onto the editor with a look on it. Next thing we're going to want to do is uh, check here and make sure that uh, we have our file names set up and we want to use the source file name because we don't want to you know we want to we want this to match we're doing an offline so we want the file names to match the original files so that's good to have that checked and a lot of other settings here don't need to go into those right now um, but for more complicated workflows you'll definitely want to learn what some of these things do so next thing you're going to want to do is set your target and that's where you are going to render your job to. So I'm going to go into browse and I'm going to create a folder again on my desktop just for the heck of it. Normally we'd use two separate drives and it wouldn't be the master drive but you know just for today. So we'll go to our desktop, control click, create a new folder and we'll call this Eddie ProRes. Go ahead and hit OK. Select that. OK. And that's our target. Now that we've got all our settings correct, we can go ahead and save this user setup. And we'll call it Eddie ProRes. 
And now, after you save it, you can use it as an easy setup. But again, after you create one of these easy setups, I'd recommend using them as a template, but always check your settings, because for some reason, sometimes uh, settings like render timeline, this can get switched. Just a little quirk of DaVinci, but something that will waste a lot of your time if you don't notice that something got switched back the other way. So now that we have everything the way we like it, we'll go ahead and hit Add Job. And that will put it in our render queue. Great to have that. And now that we're ready to do that, we'll go ahead and hit Start Render. And we'll start generating our ProRes files. Now, of course, this is just a bunch of stills, so um, rendered very fast. And we can go ahead and look at our desktop, go in our Eddie ProRes file, and there we have it. A whole bunch of move files, quick times, that represent uh, what we had been doing, setting the ProRes setting and setting the BMD film color space for each clip. Uh, so that's a little basic overview for you guys on uh, getting your color space set up correctly and transcoding using DaVinci Resolve 9.1.1. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys around.